season. The Lakers traded for former MVP Russell Westbrook loaded. L.A. now has four of the top eight active players in career points per game with LeBron, A.D., Russ, and Melo. Steph Curry agreed to a four-year, $215 million extension with the Warriors. Last season, Curry joined Michael Jordan as the only players aged 33 or older to win the scoring title. Fresh off carrying Team USA throughout the Olympics and winning his third gold medal, Kevin Durant signed a four-year, $198 million extension with the Brooklyn Nets. And Kawhi Leonard agreed to re-sign with the Clippers after opting out of his original contract. Leonard is expected to miss significant time as he recovers from an ACL injury. Max Kellerman. I know Kawhi won't be back for some time, but tell me this. Will he win a title with the Clippers? Yeah, I think eventually he will. I don't think Kawhi's done winning championships, and I think it'll be with the Clippers. He's going to sign long-term there. He is still in his prime. Um, he Look, Michael Jordan ruined a lot of guys in terms of comparisons because he came around, and once he hit his prime, he never missed games. And once he hit his prime, he just won the championship every year. And so nowadays, a year goes by, and, you know, like Kobe at first, and then LeBron or something, what happened? You didn't win the championship. Well, you know, you weren't supposed to win the championship every year until MJ came along. Um, and Kawhi, look, he did it to himself. He trolled LeBron and everything and put all this pressure on himself. But Kawhi is being held to that standard. Like, oh, he didn't win the championship again. That's two years, even though he choked the first year, had a great series, choked into game seven. And, and, but, but, like, wasn't available this year because of injury. That's going to happen to Kawhi. He's injury prone. He's going to miss some seasons. He's got chunks of seasons. He might miss some playoffs. He's going to, you're going to have to load manage him, which is going to get on people's nerves. And then he still may be absent for a time. But he has how many more bites at the apple in L.A.? For a Steve Ballmer team, a guy who is clearly willing to spend money to make the team good. Paul George is on the team. You have guys like Terrence Mann, ascending young talent on the team. They just drafted Jason Preston, who is the kind of playmaking, set-up-your-teammates type point guard, imaginative playmaker, they're hoping, um, that they have lacked recently because that's not Patrick Beverly and Rondo also didn't do the job. When you have Kawhi and Paul George as your cornerstones and an owner willing to spend money and you're going to get four or five more bites at the apple, I'm going to go ahead and say that a two-time finals MVP at some point is going to get it done again. I'm not going to be stupid and say that a guy who's six seven, six eight, uh, with his myriad of skills and championship pedigree, who just averaged 30 on 57% shooting in 11 playoff games, mm -hmm. ain't no way in hell they're going to win a championship. That's just ignorant. I'm not going to say that. What I'll say to you, Max Kellerman, is that I have my doubts and I have strong doubts. And they're for several reasons. Number one, <clears throat> I'm on the record. I would not give Kawhi Leonard a long term contract. I don't blame the Clippers if they do, but I wouldn't do it. Because even though I consider him a top five talent in the game when healthy, he's not a culture builder. He's a guy that dra grabs his lunch pail and does what he does. And at the end of the day, when the buzzer sounds, you know that when, when tip-off arrives, he shows up for practicing when you want to, working out when you want to, uh, playing when you want to, and, and, and what have you. I just don't think that's a great, great thing. And from everything that we've been told, that's what he does. Nobody said he's a bad guy. <clears throat> Nobody said teammates dislike him or anything like that. Um, I'm not trying to engage in that kind of, 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 of cynicism. I'm simply saying, look at the games played. You know, the last few years, he hasn't played 60. He hasn't played more than 60 games. I think the last four years, this man takes time off and he operates to his own beat. And even though that works for him, it compromises everything else. It's similar to what I said, Max, if you recall, when Kyrie Irving was talking about we don't really need a coach. My response was Kyrie might not because he's electrifying. He's box office. But those other players did. And when Kyrie went down and Kevin Durant was looking for help, it was hard to find because of the lack of an experienced person on the sideline to make sure all of those dudes around them were ready. Now, I think Steve Nash will learn from that and be even better this upcoming year, and I think it helps that he's not going to have Mike D'Antoni on the bench with them. Okay? But the bottom line is 
that was a hindrance. When I look at the Clippers, I think about Kawhi Leonard and how that hinders you. I also think about the fact that I'm thinking about Luka Doncic. And Luka Doncic in six of the seven game series that they played, Max, 31, 39, 44, 42, 29, and 46. Where's the hell is the defensive ace that was Kawhi Leonard to do something about that kind of individual dominance? Because that's what Luka was doing to them, which is why the series went seven games. We got to pay attention to that. We got to pay attention to significant competition in the Western Conference. The only reason why I wouldn't summarily dismiss what you're saying, Max, is because I happen to think that Ty Lu can make an argument that he's the best coach in basketball That's right. right now. I, I, and, because he's, and because he's that good of a coach and you've got some personnel around him, not to mention you got over that hump finally getting to the conference finals. The drafting of that kid, Keon Johnson, I like as well. I'm just looking at the Los Angeles Clippers. Do they have a chance? Yes. Would I bet my money on Kawhi Leonard? No. Well, in the playoffs, it would be wise to bet your money on Kawhi Leonard because he's one of the all-time great performers. You mentioned Ty Lu. I believe he is the best coach in basketball. We saw it again these last playoffs. If you look, go back and look at what – now, look, Kawhi, a great offensive player, Stephen A., is going to get his. I don't care who's on him. You put Dennis Rodman That's on a true. great – But, if, you know, Dennis Rodman – No, no, you mean Luka Doncic, right? You mean Luka Doncic? Yeah, yeah, right? Luka. I'm saying right, you, could right. put, you could put whoever you want on a great offensive player. If they got it, there's not so much that can be done, particularly in this NBA, the way the rules are enforced. So – do you believe, yes or no, Kawhi is a great a defensive player? I believe he's one of the greatest defensive players ever, even if he's not quite what he was a couple of years ago defensively. I'll give you that. He's still a great defensive player. You go back and look at the playoff series, like you mentioned, 30, 30 points a game, um, 55 58% shooting, whatever. Here are his playoff series, just going back to 2017. This is what he averaged in each series. 27, 32, 24, 33, 29, 30, 35, 28, 26, 24, 31. He's, and he's doing it on great shooting, and he's doing it with defense. Like, even what? if you think he's not a culture builder, any great team's going to have at least two max contract type guys nowadays, right? Can Kawhi be one of them? Yes, he can. Yes, he, and he can. can he'll he's, frequently be the best you player in the series. You cannot justify not paying him. Like, I think year to year. Here's what I'm trying to say, Max. I have no problem with Kawhi money, Leonard's money. I think he deserves every penny. It's the years that I have a problem with him with. Well, because I think I think durability is a question mark. And I think his level of commitment towards being something more than just a great player that, plays a role in here. The thing but that, that's why you, you, but that's you and why I, I jump like on, him, Stephen A., on the long-term deal. Because if it was one or two years, maybe he doesn't win a chip with him. But remember, the Clippers have never won a chip okay, that's or fair. even been there. You give him four years, I think he can get it done. Okay, that, that, that's fair, but I'm, that, that requires trust. And what I'm saying yeah. to you is that when you're in Kawhi Leonard's position, I personally believe you have an obligation to be more than just a great player. You got to be a leader. You got to be the face of a franchise. If LeBron James pulled a portion of of the stuff that Kawhi Leonard has pulled, you never hear the we end of it, would yeah. be all over him. We would crucify him. It's a shame, and Kendrick Perkins was right when he said that. It's a shame that Kawhi Leonard has flown under the radar and has gotten away with some of the stuff that he's gotten away with huh. in hijacking the Clippers organization. But, Stephen, I think part of that is how he lays low. You know, he's not on social media, doesn't talk much, so he can't fly under people's radars. You know, I just want to mention one thing, guys. He is just 30 still. I mean, when we're talking about guys, Steph's older than him, KD's older than him. I mean, we know the Lakers, so uh, he still he's does have He's a superstar. Have he's yeah. a superstar talent. And he's a champion. And he's a superstar. He's a superstar teams. talent and a champion. I'm just talking about when you talk about building a culture long term, you can't have young guys around constantly seeing that stuff. You take it off when you want, you play when you want, and all of this other stuff. That's not a good thing to build around. All right. We'll leave it on that note. Uh